Hey, I'm Matt Whitman, and this is the 10-Minute Bible Hour. You know, whether you are religious or not, I bet you've heard of the Apostle Paul, because he's not just one of the most famous, influential Christians in the history of the world. He's one of the most famous, influential people in the history of the world, and he's particularly influential and important in the city of Rome, which is where I am right now. Not the one in Georgia, the one in Italy. I'm at a church that's actually named after him. He's the guy with the sword. And what's interesting about him and his relationship with Rome is that the final chapters of his life that mostly happened outside of what is recorded in the Bible all happened here. And I thought it would be fun to grab a camera and find some of those locations associated with these less well-known chapters of the ends of Paul's life and to see what we could learn about it. So that's what I'm gonna do right now. Paul's trip to Rome started in Jerusalem after he had a couple of trials there and things went south. He appealed to Caesar, which was his right as a Roman citizen, to come and actually talk with the guy in charge to make sure he got justice. Caesar at that time was a young kid version of Nero, so it was a dicey proposition. His trip here was a nightmare, boat crashed, got bit by a snake, some other stuff happened. But eventually, he makes his way here to Rome, lands at the Roman port of Puteoli, makes a quick pit stop at a place called the Three Taverns where he meets some believers along the way. It's back that way somewhere, we don't know exactly where anymore. And then he came here to the outskirts of Rome and would have entered Rome on this super famous street, the Via Appia Antica, which is this highway right here that takes you straight into the heart of Rome. But along the way, he would have seen buildings just like this. Some of these buildings right here predated Paul's time. Some came just after the fact, but they served to give you an impression of what it was like walking into this greatest of all cities in the ancient world to potentially face his fate. This is the church of Santa Maria in Via Lata. It's a church that stands on the site of the place where the Apostle Paul was under house arrest for two years after he finally made it to Rome. This would have been a busy location back in the day, but now, it's insane. This is one of the busiest streets in downtown Rome. But inside, things are a little bit calmer, and they're having a service right now, so I'm not gonna kick down the door and show you. I was able to poke my head into this church, but for the life of me, I couldn't see where they'd be hiding an ancient house arrest apartment. So after the fact, I reached out to a guy who knows a lot about this building. His name is Professor Sarush Garamani, and he's the Department Chair of Architecture at West Valley College in California. He made this drawing and allowed me to share it with you in this video. And if you look at it, well, it's a normal church, except for this thing down here. Check that out. That's the ancient apartment, or we're pretty sure it is. And what hadn't occurred to me to this point is that almost everything that Paul experienced in Rome is now below street level. Weird. Whatever the case, if this was in fact the site of Paul's house arrest, it means that Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, and Philemon, those are all letters that make up part of the New Testament, were written on this spot. Crazy. So two year holding pattern happens here and then we're on to the next thing. Let's go check it out. The Bible ends with Paul awaiting trial before Nero, and during that time, he's probably taking in a lot of the same sights that you're looking at right now. But I kind of think that trial never happened. There's nothing to indicate that Nero cared at all about Christianity early in his reign. And a bunch of original sources suggest that Paul was released, that he traveled even west to Spain and then back east to go visit some of his old church buddies. But that means he would have been arrested again the thing is, though, there was a big fire in Rome in that interim, and Nero came out of that looking pretty bad because people accused him of not caring or doing anything about it. We know that Nero latched onto Christians as a convenient scapegoat and blamed them for the fire. So if Nero were to get his hands on Paul and wanted to make a public example of him, that would explain why Paul's second arrest and imprisonment in Rome was a lot rougher than the first one. I think he came here, I think he faced trial, and I think he ultimately died on that second trip under Nero. And the prison where he stayed during that time is right over here. So we're going to go check that out now. Steps. This place smells. Dang, a creepy place to be. 
This is awesome though. This is the Mamertine prison in Rome. This is the spot where people who were going to die awaited their execution in the first century AD. We think Peter was here, but we're pretty dang sure Paul was definitely here. Now, at the end of the book of Acts, Paul is writing letters to churches and people he's connected with in the past, and he's very upbeat. But the letters that he wrote at the end of his life, including a letter to Timothy, his protege, were written from here, almost certainly, and he's in a much darker place. He writes like a man who knows it's just about over, and he has some human regrets. He's alone, or largely alone. He misses his friends, and well, even if you're certain of what happens next, death and execution are still a pretty big deal. So Paul, the stalwart of the faith, processed that stuff out very quietly right here with the God he was following. I figured I'd just go in there and bang out a quick video, but that was surprisingly meaningful. I mean, we're talking about documents I've thrown an unbelievable percentage of my life into studying and trying to understand. And I'm walking out of a basement where some of it was written. It's wild. In 67 AD, the Apostle Paul was executed on the site of this chapel by beheading with a sword, which is why he's always depicted wielding a sword in paintings and sculptures and things like that, which is weird because he was beheaded by it and he didn't get to use it on people, but you get the idea. And according to legend, when he was beheaded, his head bounced three times because of the elastic characteristics of human heads in those days, and each place where the bounce occurred, there was apparently a fountain that sprung up. Those fountains predated Paul by a long time, but it's still cool that this is the spot where he died, even if there was slight exaggeration about head fountains. Last stop, we're back at St. Paul's outside the walls, and this is where the story ends, because this is where Paul's body ended up. Let me see if I'm allowed to film this so I can show you the sarcophagus that his remains are still in today. This place is incredible. Okay, so you're not dumb. A lot of these relics and claims to things that have to do with saints, especially from the first century AD, don't hold up under any kind of scrutiny. But this one has been examined and tested a whole bunch of different ways, and I'm persuaded that there's very high likelihood that the actual St. Paul is actually buried in that sarcophagus. Which, even though I'm not a Catholic, I find really moving. Other people are trying to talk. I'm gonna duck out. Okay, that's it. Sitting at the desk and thinking about this stuff is one thing, but going and seeing it with our own eyes is quite another. It serves as a reminder that all of this stuff we're reading about involves real people in real places at real times. And that is pretty compelling to me. I'm Matt. This is the 10-Minute Bible Hour. We'll see you soon.